Hi. So this lecture is pretty much an extension of the lithography process which we learnt in the previous lecture. What I'm going to talk about today is called lift off and which also includes metal deposition multiple steps. This is a this is uh, the lift off process is commonly used for patterning silicon wafers and this is a very uh, well known technique in the case of semiconductor industry. Okay, so in the previous lecture we learned that with photolithography we can pattern polymer structures on top of a silicon wafer. Okay, now the silicon wafer may be bare silicon wafer which means it has no other material on top of that or it can also have some films for example silicon dioxide film or silicon uh, nitride film. Why do we have these films? Because well silicon is our functional material that is the semiconductor material huh? but we also need to sometimes create electrical insulation between different parts and that is why we create an insulating layer for example using silicon dioxide which is a relatively easy layer to fabricate because what we need to do is just put the entire silicon wafer inside a high temperature furnace in the presence of oxygen and this layer grows by itself. You can also do a chemical vapor deposition for this but you can also thermally grow the oxide which can be tens of nanometers, 100, 200 nanometer. You can also control the height of that, the thickness of that film. Okay, so we have silicon, we have silicon dioxide and now our polymer pattern can actually be used for patterning the silicon wafer itself. Hmm. So our polymer pattern which we prepared after photolithography is not the final pattern in this case. So if it were the final pattern then okay you are done after lithography part or you can also do some other processes for example you can convert these structures into carbon structures and make carbon uh, based micro devices but if you want to use this as a sacrificial structure for patterning silicon that process is known as lift off and this is what I'm going to describe here. Okay so let's say this is the cross section of your silicon wafer on top of that you have the you have a layer of silicon dioxide and on top of that you this is a photoresist and you created a photoresist structure using photolithography process. So now here you see you left the parts let's say you wanted to make a window or you wanted to make a channel or something whatever you wanted you decided which type of um, design you want and you fabricated it. Now you have certain openings in your photoresist structure okay. Now what we can do is we can selectively etch away this silicon dioxide. Hmm. How? Because now there are some parts which where silicon oxide is, is exposed and some parts where it's not and what we can do is we can use etching techniques. So we have already learned that we have dry etching which is done using plasma which can be chemically assisted hmm. and there are wet etchants which are um, which is like wet etching processes are um, sort of dirty you need a wet bench to, to, to perform those processes. However, they are very selective because there are often certain chemicals which will only attack silicon dioxide and leave silicon intact. Hmm. And they will also not affect the photoresist. So you can use these kind of chemicals. For example, um, HF or hydrofluoric acid is a very common agent for um, for silicon dioxide hmm, because it, it affects only silicon dioxide even if it does affect silicon the etch rates for silicon are much much lower. Hmm, so basically if you decide to uh, let's say etch your, uh, or your silicon dioxide layer for 10 seconds or 30 seconds that is very little time that it will damage the silicon. Hmm, okay so this is how now it will look like. You see that through your photoresist window now you have removed some silicon oxide and from that part now one can reach the silicon wafer. Okay now what do we do with the resist? What we do is now we completely wash away the resist. So using uh, there are always you know remember that the developer which we use during photolithography developer was selectively removing only the uncrosslinked let's say it's a negative resistance so uncrosslinked parts and crosslinked parts were left intact. Now we need to choose a chemical because now these are only the crosslinked parts. Hmm. Now we need to choose a chemical which also dissolves the crosslinked parts which are I mean there are a lot of chemicals which are stronger and they are um, they can uh, easily remove the polymer film and leave silicon dioxide and silicon itself completely unaffected. 
okay now yeah in this case you call your photoresist layer a sacrificial layer because you did all this photolithography you know all the work and after that you completely sort of removed your structure you sacrifice those structures for patterning your silicon wafer so this is known as a sacrificial layer okay so here you can see after resist removal now all you have is a pattern in your silicon dioxide okay now this structure it looks very nice here the walls are very vertical but it is not always the case because always especially when you're doing wet etching there is always some chemical which is also going inside the side walls so you may not have perfectly vertical side walls as we imagined however you can have this little bit of you know undercut hmm so this is known as undercut however you can it's not so bad that you can you can also you know that there will not be so much undercut and you can uh, design your patterns accordingly so that you have the tolerance for the undercut okay now this is one option the second option is that we can deposit something so here what we did was we just uh, created a window in silicon dioxide and that's where that's what we wanted hmm now what we can also do is in most uh, in many processes what you need to do is you need to prepare a metal contact with the silicon wafer with our semiconductor material huh so what you can also do is now in this window you can pattern a metal you can pattern a uh, pattern you can deposit a lot of metal let's say via sputtering process or evaporation process you can deposit some metal and again use a sacrificial layer for this purpose so how will you do that there are there are couple of options let's say one option is this okay we start with the same structure and then what we do is on top of this itself we do our metal deposition hmm whatever is the film thickness so let's say gold deposition i did some gold deposition on top of this entire structure and after that this what i can do is i can now remove the photoresist now what will happen there is some gold on top of that photoresist so since the the layer under it which was holding it that is getting washed away then the entire gold from the top will also get washed away and all you will be left with is again silicon dioxide and in between you are going to have now a gold channel or a gold um, square pattern whatever you wanted hmm so <coughs> this is also another option okay now here one thing that you need to ensure is that your metal when you're doing this metal sputtering let's say the metal film should not be too thick because if it is too thick then you will have a film connected to your bottom um gold layer and in that case when you're removing the photoresist the entire structure can get washed away so your the the metal track that you wanted that might also just get pulled and you know it can also completely get removed so you need to make sure that the film is not too thick of course the film should also not be so thin that your connection is lost hmm so you should not have eye lens for example you should have a uh, an intact film but at the same time it should not be too thick so this is one optimization parameter okay now you will say that what i have done now here you have silicon dioxide and in between metal track but what if you don't want the silicon dioxide maybe you don't want uh, um uh, any any insulating layer in that case in that case you can also directly pattern it into silicon so you can um, there are multiple options you can for example if you see the third uh, picture hmm, on the on the right hand side where we had this undercut hmm, you can also do metal deposition at this point hmm and get a similar structure right now if you don't want the silicon dioxide you can remove the silicon dioxide and now you have just a metal pattern on top of a silicon wafer maybe you just don't need the silicon uh, oxide so there are multiple options depending on your design you can you can uh, perform these kind of structures here in this case now silicon dioxide layer becomes your sacrificial layer hmm and how do you remove silicon dioxide again using hydrofluoric acid that we know you know that is that works for oxide but it doesn't attack the silicon or you can use any other method also you can also use dry etching depending on what do you want okay um so now this entire process with multiple variations multiple options this is what uh, we call lift off process and it's a very common process in the case of um uh, in the case of ic chips fabrication i had also mentioned that silicon can be directly patterned with resist so you don't need a um, oxide layer at all so 
<coughs> again, that will depend on your application. But in this case, as you can see here, you can use a dry etching process also. You can also use a, a wet etching process. One such process is known as potassium hydroxide etching, KOH etching, which selectively attacks the 111 plane of silicon and leaves all other planes out. So that's why you get these inclined plane like structures. Hmm. So you can, um, uh, if you remove the material, then uh, remove the resist, then afterwards you will get either this undercut which is isotropic or you will get anisotropic but also you can get undercut. Hmm. And there is something, if this, this uh, structure is reversed and there is another layer uh, below the silicon wafer that is also known as overcut. So the idea is that all these processes together, they are known as the lift off. All of these come under a lift off process altogether because you are ultimately removing your resist, which is kind of a lifting certain structure of your silicon vapor. Okay. Now, this entire process of uh, patterning silicon vapors using uh, these lithographic techniques, where you either prepare layer by layer structure one on top of the other, hmm, because by film deposition, for example, or you just prepare structures in the silicon wafer. You did use a certain film, but that film was sacrificial. So these techniques are known as bulk micromachining and surface micromachining. So the difference is that in bulk micromachining, the structures are patterned inside the silicon surface. Hmm. So they are inside. But in the case of surface micromachining, you have the structures on top of the silicon surface. So you have this layer, additive layer by layer technique. So these are the two uh, microfabric uh, mi microfabrication processes for uh, patterning silicon wafers where you use photolithography as a sacrificial step or an intermediate step.